so good afternoon everyone and welcome to e-commerce expansion unlocking global opportunities with ad yogi in partnership with big commerce uh, i'll be your host today uh, i'm dr lucky yadav when i head cross border and international business at ad yogi uh, of course, the Indian e-commerce business has been booming, but uh, if you are looking to diversify your business and add more uh, uh, verticals for profit, uh, cross-border has been emerging as a very key vertical for us, and we've been talking about it. We are handling quite a few brands who, have, who we have taken global, and today's webinar is just for that, that uh, if you have any queries in your mind regarding going international and how to set it up, uh, today, we will try to answer as many questions as possible for you. Uh, just to throw in a number for you uh, to think about, uh, between 2017 to 21, there's been an incremental in value of about $1.2 trillion in terms of export of services and business uh, from India. So that's a whooping number and you can be a part of this global export journey. Uh, festive is around the corner and this is a good time to think about this opportunity if you are not thinking already. Uh, so over the next one hour, we will have, uh, you know, some experts who would be talking to you and sharing some experiences with you. So before we get started, I would like to take a couple of minutes um, to introduce to you the people that we have with us today. And of course, I'm going to invite them to introduce themselves as well. So uh, we have uh, firstly Anshuman Jain, who's director and country head at Big Commerce. Uh, we have Anshuk here, who is, um, a lot of people would know him already. He's uh, the co-founder, one of the co-founders at Ad Yogi. Uh, we have Nidhi here, who's the founder of uh, Janya's Closet. Uh, she's been exporting very successfully. She'll talk about her journey. And of course, we have Prachi from Ship Rocket. She's an expert in international shipping and fulfillment. So guys, if I could just, uh, you know, invite you one by one for a quick round of introduction. Anjuman, let's start with you. Yeah, thank you, Lucky, uh, for the warm intro. Uh, hey, thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, I'm Anshuman Jain with almost 15 years into e-commerce experience. I've so always supported merchants, uh, be it domestic, B2C, B2B, cross border. I've worked very closely with a lot of agencies as well. And uh, thank you for joining in today. Uh, looking forward to share some, you know, common mistakes that people do during cross border. Thank you. Over to Anshuk. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, glad to be a part of this discussion today. I'm one of the co-founders of Agyogi. Uh, started in 2015. So it's been nine years we have been working with e-commerce brands. Uh, we have had some great success of uh, working with brands like Ray Rabbit, where we have been able to scale them to 100 CR plus annual revenues online. Uh, last couple of years, uh, we've been focusing a lot on cross-border. Uh, we have seen that cross-border is a very growth, very good growth lever for brands in India selling in the US, UK, Australia, and Canada. So very happy to be part of the discussion today. And we'll definitely focus on some of the key learnings we have seen of brands which have successfully scaled cross-border. Uh, maybe I'll pass it on to back to Lucky. Yes, no, so Nidhi and Prachi as well. So Nidhi, uh, if you could also come and say hi for a minute. Yeah, Nidhi is here. Uh, Nidhi, I think you are on mute. Uh, we can't hear you. I think. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you see me? Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Myself, Nidhi. Uh, I am associated with a brand which is into kids' luxury garments. And from like last four years, we are online. From uh, do I mean during the COVID times, we started exporting and uh, started cross border business. So. I'll be happy to answer all your queries and the, uh, you know, whatever challenges you are facing. Uh, I'll be happy to answer everything. So, I mean, looking forward to all this uh, beautiful discussion coming up now. Prachi, over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Prachi. I'm working with Chip Rocket. Um, so, there will be a lot of discussion about how it's the right time for Indian brands to explore cross-border expansion. So I'll be helping you answer some questions about like what are the struggles brands face when they talk about cross-border expansion and how a ship profit can help uh, alleviate some of those issues. But in general, like what are the trends um, with the cross-border expansion? What is the technology available? Is it now more easier or still it's, is it like a complex thing to do? 
So we can discuss some of those things today and hopefully you can have a great learning experience. Thanks, Prachi. So I will not, uh, you know, keep you all waiting anymore. Uh, the audiences have mostly joined in. So get your notepads handy and sit tight. Uh, we'll start with the sessions for today. Um, also, I would request all of you, all the attendees that uh, throughout the presentation, if you have any queries which are coming up in your mind or if you have any specific questions, please send them in chat to us. Uh, because we have a Q&A towards the end of the webinar and we would be happy to answer any queries that you might have or any questions that are coming to your mind. So we'll just get started. Uh, Anshuman, I would like to invite you to come and speak to our audience about what opportunities does big commerce hold for brands who are looking to go uh, cross-border. Thank you, Lucky. Uh, so with your permission, can I share my screen and then I'll, I'll, I'll continue the discussion from here. Yes, from there, absolutely, yeah? absolutely. Uh, just confirm once you're able, once you guys are able to see my screen. Yes, we are able to see your screen. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so first of all, thank you once again, everyone. My name is Anshuman, and I'll be talking you through the mid the time allotted to me is dot eight to nine minutes. I'll make sure I finish in that time. And please keep on posting your questions, comments while you see. Um, we are an American e-commerce platform. It's a public listed company, and we incepted back in two thousand eight. And uh, the company is called Big Commerce, Big Commerce Holdings. Uh, apart from Big Commerce, we've got a couple of other products as well. A feedonomics, a, a, you know, a, a, a marketing feed product, makes with a web page builder, and a few other things. Yeah. But today's discussion is a lot about uh, um, problems, or I would say um, things to avoid while going cross border. Because I, I, I'm a firm believer. Tab tak gyan mat banto ya tab tak uh, you know. Uh, ज्ञान मत दो जब तक कोई पूछे ना तो अगर आप ज्ञान पूछेंगे तो मैं जरूर बताऊंगा आज मैं सिर्फ ये बता रहा हूँ सिर्फ वट आर द मिस्टेक्स सम ऑफ द यू नो एक्ट एंड एंड अवार्ड दैट वी वन ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम बट क्विकली मूविंग इन टू आर यू नो टूडे इज डिस्कशन सो आई एम गोन टॉक अबाउट इंटरनेशनल एक्सपेंशन विद बी कॉमर्स येस बिकॉज वी बिलीव फॉर यू यू शुड एक्सपैंड ग्लोबल मार्केट विद फैशन एज अ डोमेन गवर्नमेंट पुशिंग यू देर सो मेनी बेनिफिट इन टैक्स एंड अदर थिंग्स सो दैट समथिंग दैट इज ग्रोइंग एट अ वेरी rapid pace think about how when you do global how localization can help you just think like design you know content sh unique shopping experiences simplifying you know your uh, storefront with the uh, you know single back end and multiple front end or single back end multi currency and then towards the end of the day reducing your total cost of ownership be it time be it cost be it material and making sure that you are as effective in domestic market as you as you could be globally as well so quickly you know um, i'm sure my screen is visible enough so <clears throat> here are a few mistakes that i have identified on a lot of domestic websites when people do doing going cross border so first of all and and the foremost challenge that i see is multiple websites with same content it's like people go .com mystore.com .in.co.uk or whatever but it's the same content you know by doing this you get a lot of seo penalties it's it's duplication and diluting in your link and diluting in you know uh, the crawling efficiency of your website so thereby you know you confuse the crawl crawlers and you get a low you know organic traffic rate catalog and product details page in usd or in desired currency but the checkout is in inr you know and people see 90% of drop dropouts on those screens i've just pasted to you know a screenshots uh, i want you to focus on the screenshot on the right hand side on the bottom side this is from one of those you know great indian brands where this is what i could see on their website that they're showing 150 currencies but towards the end it's all inr that's a big 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 blunder second and and maybe to the next point displaying your promotions in inr yeah lack of local payment options Now let, let's take an example. If you're selling into to someone in in Germany, they have a a base. Uh, you know the way we have UPI India, they have something called Gyro Pay. And for Indians, if you if you do it with PayPal, they enable you Gyro Pay and a lot of local options. So not having the international option, I've seen stores with cash on delivery doing cross border, and then and you know you you would have, then can definitely imagine what is going to happen. Then. poor website or localization promotions pg language which in which in uh, you know uh, increases the abandoned carts and then you keep on you know trying to target these customers it, uh, <clears throat> then is 
redirection of urls you know this causes a lot of google merchant center problems if you see there's a screenshot for one of uh, an indian uh, brands they got stuck their actually google merchant center their ad account got blocked which affected them badly and took them over 7 days to you know get their ads and things started and it was a simple problem if you read that screenshot it says domain the domain that you submitted for website has been determined to be something something redirecting if a shopper clicks on a website it is redirecting to a listing page or the listing doesn't contain the same product in the same language which is confusing the shopper this is a message by google and their ad account got blocked so you know your ad account is blocked you are gone and you using the same ad account for domestic and cross border it's a big problem right and then challenges around the price multiplier you know a lot of merchants are today confused should i jack up my price should i play around with the exchange rate and all those things so you know it's it's a big problem and targeting only indians globally i can promise you i can tell you a lot of my colleagues in my north american company currently and in the past as well you know they like a lot of indian products and, and americans love to shoe, uh, shop and and you know gro uh, globally also people love to shop all these problems that i've shared with you are done by one of our you know market leading platforms uh, in the market our so called north american friends matlab log chahe to comments mein guess kar sakte hai kaun hai matlab it's up to you uh, but the bottom line is ye mistakes avoid karni chahiye and uh, i'll share some few examples ki ek product page kaisa dikhta hai so if you see this is a simple product page maine price ko highlight kiya hai which shows great product product multi price multiplier lagaya hai usd price dikha raha hai but the moment you go on the checkout page wo inr mein price aa gaya you know this is such a big blunder i i, I think mere se mistake ho gaya i should have shown the bottom as well wahan pe cod bhi available tha but anyways that is good for now so this is a big blunder this is a big blunder you know conversion nahi hoga I want to add another point to this. When an Indian, even if you're targeting, ये मेरे को ना बहुत बार लोग कहते हैं कि हम तो Indians को target कर रहे हैं, वो तो INR में खरीद लेते हैं. But think about it. उनका जो payment instrument है, जो credit card या debit card वो use करेंगे, उसमें INR या three आप आपने hundred dollars collect करने थे, but वो convert होके four digit बन गया, which is like say eight thousand rupees or eight thousand five hundred rupees. उनके credit card में that's a big challenge. वो लोग बैंक एक्सेप्ट ही नहीं करता उस कंज्यूमर को बैंक को चार बार कॉल करना पड़ता है एक्टिवेट करने के लिए एंड आई वुड लाइक जानिया क्लोजेट निधि टू टच अपॉन दिस ऑन ऑन हर चैलेंजेस ये कैसे ये लोग ये लोग उसको फिगर आउट करते हैं तो दिस इज अ बिग प्रॉब्लम आप यूएसडी में कन्वर्ट कर रहे हो चेकआउट आई एन अगर वो हिट करेगा तो आई हिट करेगा अगर वो लेना भी चाहता है तो भी ट्रांजेक्शन नहीं होगी बिकॉज उसके क्रेडिट कार्ड पे एक आई एन पे करेंसी का मल्टीप्लायर ए है वो नहीं एक्सेप्ट करता दैट्स अ बिग प्रॉब्लम ओके नाउ दैट्स दैट्स वन सो विद बिग कॉमर्स यू कैन हैव यू नो इफ यू सेलिंग इन वटेवर करेंसी यू कैन हैव इफ यू सी मैंने एक स्क्रीनशॉट लगाया है कस्टमर कम्स इन फ्रॉम फ्रॉम पाउंड्स और दे सी पाउंड्स एज अ एज अ प्राइस एंड दे सी लोकल पेमेंट ऑप्शंस ऑफर्ड बाय पेपैल और नीचे भी सेम सेम ऑन द सेम वेबसाइट यूरो एज अ करेंसी सो यू नो these are some very local uh, localized problems and localized solution that you should actually um, focus on on your websites it's like localized checkout store front pay proper catalog proper design or language bhi bahut important hai you know with big commerce aap log agar chaho aapke single store front pe a multilingual dal sakte ho aur we can figure out a way jahan pe aap sab folders bhi display kar sakte ho in case you want to you know manage uh, not a not through a translator but through unique content so we have something we have apis to do that so you can you can do that really well it is here's a screenshot of a live store how it has been done yeah um i'm just mostly mostly today i'm focusing on how some of the brands and how we have helped a lot of merchants jo actually migrate hue hain dusre platform se hamare paas aur hum you know we are in a game jahan pe hum serious customers ke sath help aur support karna chahte hain ki aap genuinely ek problem mein ho और आपको हम कैसे सपोर्ट करें यू नो ऑन योर स्क्रीन इज एन एग्जांपल फॉर वन ऑफ आर प्रेस्टीजियस मर्चेंट्स हु इज रिसेंटली माइग्रेटेड टू बिग कॉमर्स लाइक फोर मंथ्स नाउ इट वाज अ शॉपिफाई टू बिग कॉमर्स माइग्रेशन रीजंस फॉर माइग्रेशन वाज मल्टी करेंसी कस्टमाइज चेकआउट एंड रिड्यूस्ड ऐप कॉस्ट उनकी जो ऐप कॉस्ट वहां पर थी बिग कॉमर्स में आते ही वो हाफ हो गई है नेटिव थीम के अंदर वो रियक्ट कंपोनेंट्स बिल्ड कर सकते हैं विदाउट अपग्रेडिंग टू द 2.0 और ये जो पब्लिक में यू नो अगेन हमारे पड़ोसी प्लेटफॉर्म जो 2.0, 3.0 4.0 4.0 करते रहते हैं बार बार हम लोग थीम के अंदर ही आपको रियक्ट कंपोनेंट्स देने एंड योर डेवलपर कैन गो एंड बिल्ड ऑल दोज कंपोनेंट्स इस सब का आउटकम क्या हुआ 
एटी परसेंट इंक्रीज इन नंबर ऑफ ऑर्डर दैट टू क्रॉस बॉर्डर एट एक्स रेवेन्यू ग्रोथ लिटरली फिफ्टी परसेंट कॉस्ट सेविंग बिकॉज वहां पर वो दो तीन चार स्टोर चला रहे थे अगर तीन स्टोर भी चला रहे थे स्टिल उनकी फिफ्टी परसेंट कॉस्ट सेविंग हुई है और कॉस्ट के साथ साथ टाइम भी सेव हुआ है कहा वो मल्टीपल प्रमोशन चलाते थे मल्टीपल बैनर्स चलाते थे सिर्फ फिर भी एक ही करेंसी में ट्रांजेक्ट कर पाते थे चाहे वो एक आई एन आर हो चाहे एक यूएसडी हो यहाँ पे उनको मल्टी करेंसीज मिल गई है दे कैन ट्रांजेक्ट इन ओवर हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी करेंसीज और हमने फिर चेकआउट पे मल्टीपल पेमेंट ऑप्शन भी लगाया यू नो दी ऑप्शन वॉज फॉर देम की पहले दो स्टोर रखो एक शॉप फाइव एक बिग कॉमर्स पे अब ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एक स्टोर हमने बंद कर दिया अब सिर्फ बिग कॉमर्स का स्टोर है अगर एक इंडियन कस्टमर आता है तो चेकआउट पे रेजर पे दिखता है और कैश ऑन डिलीवरी आता है और अगर एक ग्लोबल कस्टमर आता है तो उसको पेपैल दिखता है या उस कंट्री के हमने जो डेजिग्नेटेड पेमेंट गेट पे लगाया है सो दैट इज नेटिव फीचर जो हमारे पास है हम लोकलाइजेशन को फोकस करते हैं लैंग्वेज भी इसके अंदर चेंज हो सकता है एंड एंड यू नो पेमेंट्स एंड दिस इज स्टार्ट्स आई वॉन्ट यू टू गो एंड सर्च इट ऑन द इंटरनेट स्टेटिस्टा ने एक स्टार्ट पब्लिश किया था फिफ्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ शॉपर्स विल नॉट शॉप अगर उनको उनकी पसंद की पेमेंट ऑप्शन नहीं मिलती जैसे इंडिया में अगर कैश ऑन डिलीवरी नहीं मिलता तो मर्चेंट्स को कन्वर्जन नहीं आती एंड सेम फॉर मी अगर मुझे एक व्हाइट गुड खरीदना है कुछ बड़ा प्रोडक्ट खरीदना है ई एम आई नहीं मिलेगा तो आई विल नॉट परचेज सो सेम गोज इट्स अ ग्लोबल प्रॉब्लम और अगर मैं आपको एज अ मर्चेंट भी देखूँ जब आप अपने वेंडर से आइटम्स प्रिक्योर करते हो जब तक आपको उधार या क्रेडिट पीरियड ना मिले आप लोग नहीं खरीदते हो करेक्ट सो इट्स गोज बाय द सेम लॉजिक so so payments is a make or break it's a make or break or localization is the second make or break with this i have another uh, you know example of a merchant this was a magento to big commerce migration again unki bhi problem multi currency thi jewelry ke andar they had over 500 variants per product usko manage karna b2c aur b2b ko same page pe manage karna improved seo make sure ki unka jo current url structure hai wo affect na ho and on top of it cost na bade because diamonds hai jewelry hai एवरेज ट्रांजेक्शन वैल्यू इज लाइक वॉट थ्री थाउजेंड फोर थाउजेंड यूएसडी विच इज नॉट अ जोक तो वहां पर एक बहुत बड़ा यू नो कुछ कंपनीज अगैन मेरे जो कंपेरेटर्स है वो अपने आपको कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म ना बोल के पेमेंट्स कंपनी बोल रहे हैं तो वहां पर हम लोग बहुत कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव प्लेटफॉर्म है जहां पर वी डोट चार्ज एनी ट्रांजेक्शन फी इट्स अडर बेस्ड प्राइसिंग मॉडल एंड दी एंड रिजल्ट इज अगैन एट्टी परसेंट ऑर्डर इंक्रीज उनके आई टी की और यू नो बाकी रिसोर्सेज की कॉस्ट और टाइम रिड्यूस हो गया है एंड नाउ दे कैन डिप्लॉय a lot of changes promotions in half the time i think that's it from me for the day i thought i was in time and uh, please throw feel free to throw your questions on the chat window and we'll take it uh, by the end of the session thank you thank you uh, over to you uh, um, lucky thank you thanks a lot anshuman uh, guys it would be great if you could also uh, you know the attendees could put their introductions as well in the chat uh, the chat is open for you also please keep asking your questions if you want us to direct those questions to anybody specific you already know who all we have here we have anshuman anshuk prachi nidhi so if you want to direct the question to a person in your chat please write the person's name as well otherwise we'll take it up uh, with whoever wants to come in and answer it uh, next on i am bringing in anshuk who's uh, he he just introduced himself we've been working at adyogi with quite a few uh, you know significant brands to scale up their international and cross border journey anshuk would be talking to you about some of our learnings and insights that we have uh, gathered over the last one year or so working with these brands uh, anshuk over to you now uh, thanks lucky uh so yes uh i think the uh, anshuman had a very interesting slide to begin with uh, he spoke about some of the common challenges we have seen brands uh, face when they go cross border uh, almost all the challenges related very well to the discussion i have with most of the brands i interact with uh, what i'll do is i'll take a little bit of a marketing spin to that because i do understand that when a brand is launched the cross border business we do want to scale the cross border Uh, Meta and Google happen to be the two large platforms to scale cross border. So we'll talk about few of our learnings of working with brands on scaling cross border. Um, and happy to, of course, take more questions uh, on the chat or uh, later part of the session as well. So uh, we'll speak a little bit about uh, one success story of a brand we have seen uh, scale very well in the last twelve months. Um, and then I'll talk about benefits of cross border. Maybe I'll skip a little. Maybe briefly cover that. But mostly we'll talk about ten specific learnings we have had, uh, and I'll take roughly about eight to ten minutes to uh, wrap up the discussion. Uh, so this is uh, uh, True Browns. I'm sure many of you would have come across the brand. Uh, it's a women ethnic space. Uh, they have scaled quite rapidly in the last twelve months alone, 
and we see some very good success coming for true browns uh, from specifically from the us market we have also seen that uh, typically uh, uh, indian ethnic uh, ayurveda uh, handicrafts these are the categories where we see uh, cross border doing very well uh, i think my hypothesis there is all these categories have some connect to the indian uh, ecosystem uh, and uh, generally for these categories we don't compete uh, with let's say equivalent brands in china so we have some of the very good success stories we see for the ethnic uh, women apparel brands um these are some of the other brands uh, we have seen scale very very rapidly uh, malmal of course uh, forest essential acho uh, libas rupkala biba all of them uh, happen to be in the women ethnic apparel space um, and we have seen some great success of uh, them scaling in the last couple of years uh, when going cross border uh, we typically recommend uh, two big stages uh, i know many of you might have already set up your cross border and might be in the scale up phase for those of you who are uh, looking to sort of go cross border uh, there are some three or four key learnings we have had in the setup phase some of them which anshuman already covered so i'll probably cover them on a, in a brief manner uh, but would be very very uh, impactful for anybody looking to go cross border uh, so number one uh, it's slightly trivial but uh, have a separate dedicated website for cross border uh, we've usually seen the same website uh, operating across india and us uh, typically becomes a very big challenge uh, for multiple reasons Uh, number one, we have seen that websites need to be customized to the local geography. So imagine in US, we are talking about maybe um, a more, uh, let's say, uh, Black Friday sale. In India, we might be talking more about Diwali at the same period of time. So we would want to have that uh, messaging different across websites. But that's not the only reason. Uh, we have also seen that it gives much better control over pricing and catalog, uh, something which becomes very critical to scaling uh, cross border. Uh, so a good practice could be that one website for india and one website for international uh, in some cases we have seen people building multiple websites for international as well uh, but like anshuman spoke about uh, with big commerce it's easy to sort of have one single website for maybe us uk australia canada all put together pricing becomes the second very important thing uh, now i understand that all of us uh, by default would have this mindset that look you need to price your products in a way that uh, you charge the product price plus the shipping cost but what is very important to understand is shipping cost is not the only incremental cost when a brand is selling in the us um, uh, there are incremental marketing cost as well uh, i have done some brief math on the slide that uh, typically the cost of impression in face in us is typically four times uh, the same in india on meta so if you have an acquisition cost in india roughly about 800 rupees which is around 10 dollars the same acquisition cost in us could be as high as 30 to 40 dollars so the incremental 20 to 30 dollar acquisition cost also needs to be factored into the pricing and which is why we say that usually uh, we have seen a common range of around 1.5 to 2x of domestic price and what i showed on the screen is again a product from true browns it's the same product selling at 3200 inr and 76 uh, dollars in the us as you can see it's an easily a 2x sort of a pricing in the us and we have seen that um, the people in the us uh, are Uh, sort of they have this mind that the same product will not be sold at the same price uh, just think about when we buy an iphone in india till about a few years ago we were always uh, sort of fetching in more amount of money and uh, people know the same mindset in the us as well so uh, i know there is a hesitation that can we sell the same product at 2x but we have seen uh, successfully being done across most websites uh, from cross border perspective the third is uh, typically the basket size in the us is higher we usually seen that uh, if you're targeting the indian diaspora in the us they have a habit of purchasing in more than one quantity like for example in india typically we see 1.2 1.3 as the average basket size in us we have seen this average basket size being as higher as 2.1 2.2 2.3 uh, so uh, cart based discount offers or bundling offers tend to do really well in the us uh, many cases we have seen that if you buy let's say certain amount of 150 dollars or 200 dollars and we have a discount on top of it or a free shipping on top of it uh, we have seen the conversion rates go high the same cart based offers may not work as well in india because in india the buying behavior a lot of times is not to buy two three four quantities in one go uh, we have seen in us typically uh, that's the buying behavior so bundle discounts could be a very good uh, strategy um now checkout page uh, anshuman spoke about uh, very interestingly uh, checkout currency of course has to be the same as the product page currency uh, the moment we have seen the checkout currency changes to india for whatever reason inr we have seen huge dropouts happening uh, 
uh, but that's not the only thing. We also uh, typically recommend that the payment gateways have to be very customized to the geography. Like, for example, Razorpay is very big in India, but we see Stripe as doing Stripe and PayPal as the dominant payment gateways in the US. We also see cash on delivery actually being quite prominent in Middle East, um, uh, which is quite the same as what is it in India. So having the right payment gateways is super, super critical. Um, one metric which I would want to urge all of you to track is what is your add to cart to purchase ratio, uh, which is internationally we have seen a good number is around 8 to 10 percent. But if you don't have the right payment gateways, this number could be as low as 2 percent or 3 percent. So monitoring this metric will become very, very important. Otherwise, we may get into a situation where you're getting a lot of add to carts, but people are dropping off after add to cart. Uh, this is actually um, a little bit about the setup uh, of marketing. Now, it might sound like very hygiene, uh, but trust me, we have seen uh, this actually becomes very, very important. So uh, a good practice is to have a separate website, which like we spoke about, but separate ad account, uh, separate catalog, separate pixel is what we recommend as well. Uh, this is also a best practice which Meta and Google recommend. So make sure that you have a different ad account altogether. Uh, prefer to have that ad account in the US time zone if you are serving the US geography and need not be in the Indian time zone. It just makes it very easy to optimize it. Um, what is very important is to get the team also aligned. Many a times I have seen that when founders want to do cross-border, they typically have a mindset that let's give it a try. Maybe in first month we get a very good response, then we will scale it. Uh, think of setting up a cross-border business as setting a new startup. Uh, the moment we set up a new startup, one month is very short duration to actually expect any results. We typically recommend founders to have at least a three to six month horizon, if not 12 months. Also have a separate set of team sort of work towards uh, the cross-border. Uh, usually we are seeing that if you have the same India team working on cross-border, um, they're going to spend 90% of their time optimizing the India campaigns, primarily because India is bulk of the business. And with only 10% of the time going into cross-border, it becomes very difficult to make it a success. Uh, like, the, like I just said, the mindset of starting a new startup is what is needed to make it a success. Uh, and it does take that kind of an effort uh, to sort of uh, make cross-border successful. On the scale-up front, I have a quick three, four, five pointers. Uh, I'll probably cover them in the next uh, three to five slides. Um, uh, this uh, is also a very uh, prominent point which I wanted to drive today, uh, that cross-border is not only about paid advertising. I know all of us want to run Facebook, Google ads and get that revenue, but we have usually seen that it's the 360 degree sort of a push which is needed to make cross-border a success. And think about how the brand became successful in India. I'm sure you would have done a lot of organic, you would have posted a lot on your uh, social content, we may not have listed ourselves on marketplace, we may have an offline presence in India. Uh, and of course, we would have a D2C website with Facebook, Google ads uh, to make US successful or any other geography successful. At least some of these elements need to be replicated. Uh, just running paid ads on Meta and Google uh, may not be sufficient to make it profitable. So see if you can localize the content. Maybe we can get um, uh, more local CRM activities, which means your WhatsApp messages can be changed into SMS. WhatsApp is not that big in US right now. SMS continues to be quite big, including email. So we may want to change our CRM challenges, channels as well. Uh, we may think about amazon.com listing on that. Uh, we may think about getting some local influencers uh, and tie-ups with those local influencers. But the mindset is the same, that it has to be a cross um, omni-channel strategy and not necessarily just a Facebook and Google strategy. Localized content, I think I briefly spoke about it. Uh, a quick example there of Malmal. Uh, they have done phenomenal job when it comes to localization of content. Uh, they actually had one of their collections named Namaste London. And we saw some very good traction of the collection coming in both US and UK geography. So uh, this entire collection uh, was launched, was shot in London as well. Uh, so any opportunity to localize catalog uh, will definitely help the brand differentiate and scale uh, outside India. This is actually an example of uh, a brand Libas. Unfortunately, looks like my video is not uh, sort of loading here. What I wanted to talk about here is uh, they created this, um, collaborated with NIRI Influencer, and they ran this nice video where an NRI Influencer talks about how Libas uh, is launching its new collection in the US. And it talks about uh, Kiara Advani as well and how they have collaborated with Kiara. Uh, and that uh, uh, influencer video actually became one of their best performing creatives. It gave the best ROAS and it ran for a couple of months. So if you can collaborate with local influencers, definitely helps a lot on the Meta and Google platforms.
last two examples uh, we did this with forest essential uh, where they ran a mothers day event in the us uh, the what we have seen is i know all of us must be running events in india we have seen some good success in india but uh, what i have personally seen is events are a bigger lever in the us even when compared to india so most cases we have seen that a good event run in uh, run well in us can give a 3x 2.5 to 3x uh, kind of an uplift so imagine if you were doing let's say um a thousand dollars per day in us in terms of sales on an event day we have seen brands do three thousand dollars even four thousand dollars per day um, if they are successfully run the event in this specific case we did it for forest essential they, they got a 2.5x jump in their daily revenues uh, just on the mother's day event and when it comes to us events can be even um, uh, we can actually mix events both indian events and us events for example you may want to do diwali and holi for sure raksha bandhan as well uh, if you're targeting the indian diaspora but we can also do 4th of july independence day we did that with one of our clients very recently or we can do black friday which becomes really well maybe even christmas to some extent so we actually get sort of a uh, good uh, set of events to work on both indian and international events the last example is of moy uh, this is actually uh, one of the brands from Ahmedabad, uh, they sell uh, jewelry, uh, both fashion and refined. And uh, the point which I want to drive here is uh, we don't necessarily need to target the Indian diaspora alone. Uh, we have seen some great results coming in when brands are able to expand their audience uh, to the local American population there. Uh, I think uh, even Anshuman spoke about it, that it need not be Indians alone. We have seen uh, Americans buying a lot of uh, Indian stuff as well. So uh, be mindful of that, that if for a brand to really scale cross-border, uh, expanding outside Indian diaspora would also be very critical. So I'll probably uh, stop sharing now and hand it back to Lucky. Uh, Lucky, over to you. Thank you, Anshuk. Thank you for thank you for that insightful presentation. Uh, we'll dive right into uh, the next segment, which is a panel. Uh, and uh, I mean, Anshuman and Anshuk are already there. Uh, we'll just bring in Prachi and Nidhi as well. Uh, we have some questions, uh, you know, based on, uh, you know, what are some problems or challenges brands usually seek out in the cross-border space. So I have some questions for the panelists and if audience has any question, please keep writing to us and uh, we'll have the panelists answer them as well. Uh, Nidhi, uh, we can't see you. Because I'm sending my first question to you. Or should we let Nidhi come in and... Um... Nidhi, can you hear me? Hi, can you see me now? We can hear you. I think there's some issue going on. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, if you're happy to listen to me, would that work? Uh, just give me one second. Uh... Someone from my team it's, can just it's check mentioned it. that the host has disabled it. So can, can you, you just check? check? Now? I'll catch hold of this host later, Nidhi. But for now, <laughs> let me get your camera. Okay. Fixed. Okay. Can, can you yeah. try now? Can you just try switching on your camera now? Oh. Turn off. Turn on. No, no, no. Camera. It's not happening. I don't know. I have turned on. Okay. No turn problem. Off. Oh, no problem. Uh, so Nidhi, I'll still start with you. I will give you the first question. Uh, you know, since you have a brand you were mentioning, I want to understand, and I'm sure the audience would also like to know that at what point of your journey uh, of building a brand that uh, did you decide to go international or cross-border? Can you share about that? Thank you, Lucky, first of all, uh, for bringing me in this uh, panel of cross-borders. And it is really good for me to give my insight. So our journey with the brand began during challenging time of COVID-19, honestly, when uh, mostly, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. We do so mostly all the brands were maybe juggling uh, to get uh, sales and particularly all the retail stores got shut down. And especially to us, it was a, a major setback because our kind of addresses are the part of the celebration, right? So you generally cannot sell. And it was especially for the kids. And it was very difficult for us to, you know, strategize in a way that it can sell to the consumers. So we started online store uh, during COVID-19. And initially, we started uh, in India. 
uh, with a lot of content strategy and we started promoting our products as a in a way that you know it's okay if there is uh, nothing a big party or something but it we started uh, putting our content in a way that it can create memories being with family is more important so that's how the consumer started buying and to my surprise our clothing uh, in fact more on the expensive side clothing was bought, bought by the people uh, because they wanted to create memories with the families and friends that was the time when everyone was together and we got a lot of orders during that time from international areas us uk and all and we dis- we we uh, somehow realized that there is a you know a growing demand of this kind of clothing internationally uh, there have been certain points uh, told by anshuman and the other people on the panel which i clearly i mean i agree honestly so uh, when you go uh, internationally there are some key points that you have to see so we started making our content and our strategy and of course the website in a way that people more and more people can order from uh, those area and that's how the whole journey began when it, when you talking about the international ground thanks nidhi uh, anshuk i'm going to extend that question to you because you know that is one of our most frequently asked questions that at what point of your journey as a brand can you start thinking of going cross border or international nidhi we can see you now yeah, yeah. finally oh, yes. sorry yes yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, that's great lucky so yes uh, this is a question we get asked quite often uh, my answer is usually that uh, when the india business uh, l- let's assume you have started with india uh, then my suggestion would be when the india business is profitable and uh, you already are let's say i you, you don't have immediate concerns of pnl in india either you have a vc funding or if you are bootstrap you are pnl positive and you feel that you have enough uh, sort of a cash flow Uh, to sustain international marketing for a period of three to six months. Obviously, there is a setup cost to start with, uh, but setup cost is still a one-time cost. Marketing usually becomes uh, quite expensive. So, as long as you check mark all those three things, you have a PNL positive in India. Uh, you have three to six months sort of buffer uh, which you can invest in international markets. Plus, you can pick up the one-time setup cost as well. I think that will be a good time to go international. Thanks. So now that you know. uh we have the answer to that that when can we start international anshuman what is the solution you have for the brands who are looking to go international what what solutions does big commerce hold to facilitate their journey sure thank you so i want to touch upon two points uh, from what anshuk spoke and and few other things so so point number 1 you need not set up multiple stores we will ensure ensure everything happens from the same store देर बाय इंश्योरिंग आपका डुप्लीकेट कॉन्टेंट नहीं है एस सी ओ में प्रॉब्लम नहीं है यू नो एंड मल्टीपल पेमेंट ऑप्शन ऑन दम स्टोर फ्रंट सो दिस इज वन थिंग सेकेंड सेटअप कॉस्ट कुछ भी नहीं है अगर आपके पास एक रनिंग बिग कॉमर्स स्टोर है बैक एंड पे जाके खुद ही मल्टी करेंसी अनेबल कर सकते हो और आप खुद पेपैल स्ट्राइप टू चेकआउट आडियन ऐसे पेमेंट ऑप्शन को कॉन्फिगर कर सकते हो राइट सो दिस इज समथिंग आई वॉन्ट टच अपॉन now when you talk about solution that i have i think ek matured merchant ko hi you know domestic mein jab usne apne hands try kar li hain aur uske paas kuch data collect ho jayega ki ab ha foreign se queries aa rahi hain international queries aa rahi hain kuch transactions ho rahi hain that is a great point to start and as anshuk said definitely paise jeb mein dal ke chalo 3 6 mahine ke that is very critical right so to to talk about solutions paise nahi lagte बिग कॉमर्स पे अगर आपके पास ऑलरेडी स्टोर है उसी स्टोर के अंदर हम मल्टी करेंसी एनेबल कर देंगे आप सपोर्ट से चार्ट करके कर सकते हो खुद कर सकते हो पॉइंट नंबर वन पॉइंट नंबर टू ये जितनी भी प्रॉब्लम्स हमने आइडेंटिफाई की थी ना कि चेकआउट पेज पे कुछ करेंसी और और प्रोडक्ट पेज पे कुछ करेंसी वो भी टेक केयर हो जाएगी इसके साथ साथ अगर हम मेरे एंटरप्राइज प्लान में जाते हैं तो उसमें एक बहुत अमेजिंग फीचर है वो अमेजिंग फीचर ये है आप अपनी प्राइस लिस्ट मैनेज कर सकते हो आप बोलो मेरे पास सौ इसके यूज है जिसपे एग्जाम्पल दिया मैंने मेरी एबीसी प्राइस लिस्ट है एंड देन फॉर द सेम इन इन यूएसडी एंड फॉर द सेम एसके यूज मुझे अगर मिलर मिडल ईस्ट में बेचना है तो धिरम्स लगेगा पर ये एक्स वाइज ये प्राइस लिस्ट है तो आप प्रोडक्ट लेवल पे प्राइस को चेंज कर सकते हो टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन सोल्यूशन दर आई हैव मल्टी करेंसी चेकआउट मल्टी लिंगल आपके यू आर एल एस सी ओ पर्पज के लिए खराब नहीं होते इट्स इट्स अ सेम कॉन्टेंट वी यू कैन एड एन एप एंड यू कैन यूज समेटिव जो हमारी थीम के अंदर कंपोनेंट्स है 
टू बिल्ड मल्टी लिंगल ये सारी बेस फीचर्स है प्लेटफॉर्म के अंदर मेरे ट्वेंटी नाइन डॉलर प्लान में भी ये सारी चीजें अवेलेबल है सिर्फ प्राइस लिस्ट एक फीचर है जो एंटरप्राइज कस्टमर्स को अवेलेबल होती है या उसके नीचे उसके पीछे काफी कुछ परमिटेशन कॉम्बिनेशन है बट ऑन माई बेसिक प्लान इट्स क्रॉस बॉर्डर मल्टी करेंसी तो सो आई थिंक दैट्स माई आंसर इफ दैट जस्टिफाइज Thanks, Anshuman. Uh, so, Prachi, uh, in all the events that we do, I think logistics people get asked the most questions. So, uh, so we already have a question from uh, Nidhi Singh in Q and A, who is asking about international. Can someone put insight on how to manage logistics cost for international? I had a similar question for you that you know what are some of the uh, primary challenges uh, brands which are looking to go cross border they face and uh, do you have any solutions to address their concerns so uh, that's my question and nidhi singh's question to you so when brands want to go for cross border expansion the whole logistics piece definitely comes with some complexities the primary one being shipping costs are high going for one package from india to us is just it's difficult so uh, something that ship rocket introduced in the market which will be very useful uh, to some of the sellers or some of the brands who've joined us today is that a lot of um, a lot of logistics um, companies when they give you prices when they give you rates there is a minimum um, weight bracket that you have to adhere to so whether you are sending a 10 gram product or 50 gram product you will be charged at 500 grams or a 1 kg rate but uh, with ship rocket we start our weight slabs from 50 grams so that the seller the brands who spend on sending smaller shipments can get some benefits out of it apart from that like the brands that are uh, new to cross border face a lot of custom clearance issues the Uh, process of getting their goods cleared from india to the destination is complex because there is lack of awareness of what kind of documents are required there is lack of awareness of what are the duties that will be levied what will be the charges that will be levied so those problems have been solved at ship rocket because we've made everything automated all of the documentation required the tax calculation duty calculation is all automatic so the brands have more awareness uh, at the onset before even sending their products that this is what they will face and this is um what they will uh, you know this, this is how these problems will be solved apart from that another challenge that i feel i've seen a lot of brands are face is that if you have like a big shipment let's say you're sending um like a big packet then and the shipment the actual product inside it is actually very small and weighs very less you will be charged at a volumetric weight so your shipping cost increases exorbitantly whereas in ship rocket we've um, started a new dead weight service it's called ship rocket premium plus where even if your packet size is big you can um, opt for the dead weight service and pay for the actual weight so your problem of sending a big package um gets solved because you are uh, then being uh, levied a logistical fee which is a lot more suitable to you and of course like a lot of times when um, new sellers uh, send their products abroad they weigh it and uh, when it's reached it reaches the customs the there is a complete different weight that is uh, shown by the custom agency there is a lot of weight discrepancy issues that comes up and it happens a lot of times so all that hassle is taken away from the brands because ship rocket then handles that weight discrepancy we have a discussion with our brands that okay what is your catalog what is the weight let's maybe we can even freeze it so you don't have an issue later uh, and we on our platform also sometimes show our brands what our uh, um like what are the charges that you will face uh, let's say you are going into eccf clearance which clearance type based on the hsn code that they mention on the panel so a lot of these problems get solved because of using a tech platform versus doing everything manually 
Thanks, Prachi. So uh, since we're talking of compliance, uh, I'll bring back Nidhi who has, uh, you know, done this uh, exporting. And Nidhi, we were also talking about this, uh, you know, that uh, if for brands that are looking to export, there are a lot of compliances that they have to be sure about and uh, be very sure about the payments, about exporting rules, etc. And uh, I also have uh, someone in the chat, I don't have their name, but they are also asking the, a similar question that, um, they are into fashion and they want to understand what are the, do we need any certification to export cloth like BIS? So uh, Nidhi, how was your journey managing the compliances uh, when you started to export? Uh, Nidhi, yeah. you'll have to unmute yourself. I think today we have a challenge. Either we can hear Nidhi or we can see her. <laughs> Nidhi, you are still on mute. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we have both. Perfect. I'm so sorry. There's a power cut going on. It just came so there could be a problem. So when we talk about compliances, I, I think I've learned uh, this very hard. There has to be some agency in India to help you in the compliances for the international uh, to understand compliances, the taxes and customs. We do have agencies like uh, Open Borders who help you. In fact, you can... Uh, contact any local people internationally to understand. But even in India, we do have a lot of documents that needs to be submitted. Uh, Prachi did uh, tell about a lot of uh, uh, compliances and the documents. Uh, we never reached out to Ship Rocket and we had to learn the hard way, honestly. So I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, Ship Rocket does these kind of documents and compliances in which we have been facing till date all the, uh, you know, uh, issues because we had uh, had no idea on what are the documents to be given to the government and how the payment gateways uh, work and you know the currency and the exchange and then you have to get your FIRC clearance so till date we are fighting upon all those things but i think there has to be uh, a clear understanding before you start exporting outside and a clear understanding from the other country where you're importing the garment. I mean, the country that is importing the garment. So it has to be uh, the uh, local agencies that you have to get involved with it. And plus, uh, you have to go on the government websites if it it is a case of the uh, India. And uh, people like Prachi, who is handling the uh, shipping, I think there the main key, case comes in terms of uh, the documents that need to be submitted to the government. Honestly. Okay. Uh, Anshuman, I am now bringing you an audience question. And Anshuman, then I will also extend that to you after Anshuman. Uh, so the, I'm reading Ritvi's question now that I have a store on Shopify. Again, a very classic question. Uh, fashion accessories and jewelry. And I don't want to change as my fear it may affect my India business. But I want to capture international audience. Uh, and with current store, it shows INR on checkout. And uh, there's 99% drop in conversion. What is your suggestion for me? Um, yeah. Anshu, I will pass on the question to you from the context of how the market is looking like for clothing and jewelry, because there are a couple of questions for clothing and jewelry exporters there. So you could share that, you know, how we have seen the market growing. But Anshuman, first the problem addressal for you. Um, Please. I think this is a this is a classic problem for ninety nine percent of the brands on the same platform that they have now become a payments company and not a commerce company. A lot of features that they onboard are not for India centric business, but it is also for uh, you know uh, global their global presence. Where Shopify payments are now to answer this question, I think Nidhi is a classic Janya closet. Nidhi is a classic example how we did. I approach what I approach. What happens? You know. I also agree that someone should not disturb the business of someone's business. What did we do in that approach? Anyways, we are talking about the competitor. That competitor anyways says that you make multiple stores, make two stores, make five stores, make ten stores. Make multiple apps, make uh, you multiple know, banners, make everything multiple times. When you are making multiple, then do a job. Make a domestic store in Shopify or on that platform. Cross-border, remaining 149 currencies, I have to come to you. Okay? 
मेरे पास कुछ टूल्स एंड एलिमेंट्स हैं जिसको हम हम एम्बेड करेंगे और आपका सेपरेट पेड अकाउंट होगा एज अंशुक रेकमेंडेड कि आपको दो अलग अलग गूगल और फेसबुक अकाउंट्स बनाने हैं तो दोनों का यू आर एल स्ट्रक्चर सेम होगा तो एनी आप दस स्टोर बनाने की बजाय एक डोमेस्टिक स्टोर रखो और एक मेरे पास रखो ये सिर्फ फर्स्ट तीन महीने की जर्नी है ताकि आपका फियर फैक्टर निकल जाए राइट right? कि कॉमर्स यहां भी होता है हम भी एक इक्वलेंट प्लेटफॉर्म है इट्स जस्ट दैट कि हम लोग थोड़ा यू नो लो ऑन मार्केटिंग है इतने डॉलर्स नहीं है हम लोगों को मार्केटिंग में बर्न करने के लिए एंड आई वेरी यू नो मतलब यू नो दैट्स दैट्स अ वे तो द सोल्यूशन इज आप एक स्टोर वहीं पे रखो डोमेस्टिक बिजनेस वहीं रखो इंटरनेशनल के लिए आप मेरे पास आ जाओ सेम स्टोर का हम रेप्लिका बना देंगे इन अ कॉस्ट विथ इज लेस देन यू नो वॉट थाउजेंड डॉलर से भी कम में हो जाएगा बिकॉज यू नो अगर आपका मेचोर्ड स्टोर है तो बहुत सारे कॉम्प्लेक्स सिचुएशन हो एक बेसिक स्टोर तो फाइव डॉलर में बन जाएगा With, with more or less similar monthly features, तो मेरा ये recommendation है आप डोमेस्टिक स्टोर वहां रखो इंटरनेशनल स्टोर के मेरे पास आओ तीन महीने चला के देखो इफ एवरी थिंग इफ यू फील थिंग्स आर गुड मैं गारंटी बोलता हूँ नाइनटी नाइन परसेंट आप डोमेस्टिक स्टोर को भी यहीं पर माइग्रेट कर दोगे जैसे निधि ने किया कन्वर्जन परसेंटेज इंक्रीज हो जाएगी एस सी ओ लॉस पे नहीं जाएगा एंड आई कैन प्रोमिस यू आपका यू नो नंबर इंक्रीज हो जाएंगे और आपको वो एडिशनल ट्रांजेक्शन फी नहीं देनी पड़ेगी और मल्टीपल स्टोर मैनेज नहीं करने पड़ेंगे टेक हम संभाल लेंगे बिजनेस आप संभालो अंशुक आई वांट टू एक्सटेंड बिकॉज दिस अ यू नो extended question on this from kartikeyan he saying we export apparel garments but i think our sector struggles in cross border market due to low average selling prices can you suggest how to choose the right products for this market yes uh, so few strategies can work here number one uh, not the entire catalog needs to be exposed for cross border like for example we see brands which are in the women ethnic space in india they might be selling kurtas dupattas and individual products but when they sell in the us or international markets they typically set sell suit sets and kurta sets so uh, having a lens on which skus and categories would you want to sell and most of these could be more combos and more higher aov products definitely helps the second year seen like i spoke in the beginning also that typically people have a um, have a behavior of buying multiple products so instead of buying only one product they tend to buy two three products so having a bundle offer on top of it that if you buy three you maybe get some discount if you buy above 150 dollars uh, we may get uh, let's say 10% off or we may have a free shipping also helps in increasing average order value we have in fact uh, seen that in us typically cart size is around 3 and sometimes even higher than 3 so even if your average selling price is around 30 40 dollars we may still uh, have average order values to the tune of 120 130 dollars uh, which sort of becomes profitable when it comes to customer acquisition cost so these could be two three strategies to use to sort of bump up the aovs uh thanks anshuk uh prachi there's a question for you now i'm trying to focus more on i've actually combined the panel and qna so i'm focusing more on the questions which are coming up in the chat with the my questions uh so we have a question that uh i my product weight is 750 grams but i'm charged for a kg i'm sure that's again a very common problem so can you give a solution do we have a solution for it so if there is a weight discrepancy issue all our brands are uh, have an access to some of, like first one or the other sales person from our team would be in contact with any brand or any seller who works with chip rocket so if you are being wrongly charged chip rocket does have a weight discrepancy con, uh, resolution mechanism uh, set inside and you can definitely reach out to us uh we look at uh, where the discrepancy arised uh, in the whole supply chain whether it was customs whether it was with the delivery partner and then we figure out uh, where the uh, mistake lies whether it's with the brand or whether it's with the partner and then we do a resolution based on that and we have an uh, ai backed um, algorithm at our back end to define this we know that um, the product that you are sending how much it will weigh in on a on an average or a, on a general basis based on that taking that input plus the input that the brand has provided plus the input that the partners have provided we do a conflict resolution bipin i hope that answers your question uh, i think we are almost on time before we wrap up uh, nidhi one last question for you uh, you know you've been selling internationally and of course we also spoke about it that uh, it's it has been a great decision and choice for you so what are some marketing strategies that you can share with your audience with our audience that you use for your brand to expand your customer base 
So what has worked for you in the international space? Thank you so much, uh, Lucky. Uh, uh, this is really very important question. Uh, I think first is the uh, content. I mean, I'll give it, I'll give all the credit first to content. The kind of content that you make, you have to make it according to the markets that you want to send. You have to understand the market and understand their preferences. And accordingly, you have to make a content. It should be a story kind of a content, which could be uh, shareable, savable, and which could give them good insights so that indirectly they understand your product and you are not trying to sell directly. You just try to sell indirectly. And then you can start promoting through different social media platforms, which could be Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and you have Twitter, you have Pinterest. Now, there is another one thing is, uh, another important thing is every country has their own social media platforms. Uh, you know, there's a hit formula that goes like TikTok is very, TikTok cannot work in India. TikTok works very well in US. Then you have, uh, uh, you know, if you go to Saudi Arabia, there are other channels. So you have to look for the local channels where you think that your content can go hit and can hit that crowd. There has to be right targeting through the ads, paid ads and the organic ones. The SEO needs to be very strong. Uh, you have to get yourself listed in the uh, local search directories with those countries. Uh, then I would say that uh, when, when you try to go internationally, you have to really uh, go into the retail market of the international uh, markets also. You have to see what are the players who are doing very well. And uh, you should be putting your products there also. Beside the uh, 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 the marketplaces, you have to place your product for the marketplaces for the trust and the loyalty factor. So in case any, any person from any other country try to browse your product, if they see you in their local markets or local, uh, you know, uh, marketplaces, they have more trust on you and they always want to buy you buy your product then even your website should have uh, very transparent uh, reviews and uh, the feedbacks by the customers the stories uh, on your instagram should show very uh, uh, transparent reviews accordingly uh, and i think the best thing that has really worked for me is the ugc content right uh, content uh, uh, really plays very big. I think, you know, through content, you can reach out to any country and people start putting their questions. So the UGC, I mean, uh, somebody, you know, using your product or it has to be the real story which depicts your product and the emotions or whatever you want to show to the customer has to be really organic and real. The content has to be real. I mean, I think the content wins for me, honestly. And then, of course, the paid ads. Thanks, Nidhi. I think that was really helpful. I think with that, we will wrap up. We have already missed the time. Uh, but thank you for being uh, a great audience. You really kept me on my toes. Some of you were asking on the chat, some on the QA. So I was trying to refer questions from three resources. Uh, but uh, thank you. Uh, uh, we continue to do uh, you know webinars on cross border every month so we'll keep in touch with you regarding our upcoming events we'll also send you an email of everyone who's joined us today with the contact details of um, of course add yogi anshuman and prachi in case you have any queries or you want to get started on your cross border journey thank you again anshuman prachi nidhi anshuk for taking thank out you. time thank to you be so a much. part of this um, have a good day and the rest of the week ahead thank you everyone thank you